Nearly 21 years ago, Andrea Yates horrified the nation when she confessed to drowning her five young children in the bathtub of their Houston home. Yates, who was 37 years old at the time, suffered from severe postpartum depression, postpartum psychosis, and schizophrenia. In the archives of true crime, there are cases that defy comprehension, sending shivers down our spines. Today, we delve into such a case, the harrowing story of Andrea Yates. Our story begins in a seemingly ordinary family home. Andrea and Rusty Yates, a couple bound by love, faith, and dreams of a happy family life. Andrea Yates was a Texas mother who on June 20th, 2001, drowned her five children in the bathtub of their home in Houston. The children range in age from six months to seven years old. The case generated significant media attention and raised several important legal and mental health issues. Number one, background and mental health. Andrea Yates had a history of mental health issues including postpartum depression and psychosis. She had been hospitalized multiple times for psychiatric issues and had attempted suicide. Her mental health struggles were a crucial element in the case. Number two, the drowning incident. On the day of the tragedy, Andrea Yates filled the bathtub and methodically drowned each of her five children. She later called the police and confessed to the killings citing religious delusion and the belief that she was saving her children from an eternal damnation. Number three, legal proceedings. And now People confirms she declines annually to be reviewed for release from a mental facility. According to court testimony, on June 20th, 2001, Yates waited for her husband Rusty to go to work before she began drowning the children one by one. Andrea Yates was charged with capital murder for the death of her children. Her trial generated national attention. During the trial, her defense argued that she was severely mentally ill and at the time of the killings and it was legally insane, which is a defense that, if successful, would result in a verdict of not guilty by reason of sanity. Number four, verdict and retrial. In 2002, Andrea Yates was initially found guilty of capital murder and sentenced to life in prison. However, her conviction was later overturned on an appeal due to enormous testimony from a prosecution expert witness. In 2006, she was retried, and this time, the jury found her not guilty by reason of insanity. Number five, subsequent treatment. After the second trial, Andrea Yates was committed to a state mental hospital where she received psychiatric treatment. Her case highlighted the challenges of balancing justice and mental health care in cases involving severe mental illness. The Andrea Yates case sparked debates about mental illness, postpartum depression, and the legal system's approach to individuals with severe psychiatric disorders who commit heinous acts. It also led to charges in Texas law regarding the insanity defense. Rusty Yates. Rusty Yates and Andrea Yates were not in the process of a divorce at the time of the tragic incident involving their children. They were still married when Andrea Yates drowned their five children in 2001. The case brought attention to their family's struggles with mental health issues, but was not related to divorce proceedings. Russell Rusty Yates, the father of the children in the Andrea Yates case, could have utilized various resources to navigate the complex legal and emotional challenges he faced. These resources could have included legal counsel in the services of a family law attorney to understand his rights and options regarding child custody, visitations, and any legal proceedings related to the tragedy. Number two, mental health support. Given the traumatic nature of the incident and the mental health issues involved, he could have sought counseling or therapy to help him cope with the emotional toll of the situation. Number three, support groups. Joining support groups for parents who have experienced similar tragedies can provide similar emotional support and shared experiences. Number four, child custody evaluations. If the child custody or visitation arrangements were in question, 
He could have participated in child custody evaluations to assess his suitability as a parent. Number five, legal aid organizations. Depending on his financial situation, he might have qualified for legal assistance from legal aid organizations, especially if he had limited financial resources. Number six, mediation. In cases involving child custody disputes, mediation services can help parents reach mutual agreeable solutions without going through a continuous court battle. Number seven, family and friends. Seeking support from family and friends can be crucial during difficult times. They can provide emotional support and assistance with practical matters. Number eight, therapeutic services for children. If any surviving children require therapeutic services or counseling to cope with the losses of trauma, assessing to their services would be important to the current development. Ah, bit my fucking tongue. And they draw, uh, and they draw, uh, and they draw, and they draw, and they draw, Andrea's. Ugh. Oh man, that hurt. I'm just gonna call her Adriana. Fuck it. One of Adriana's early clinical doctors was Eileen Starbranch, and she had wrote a book telling about her experiences dealing with her patient and the creepy expectations that she had off her medications. I'm gonna go ahead and read this part to you. In Adriana's first post-hospital visit, Starbranch told her that even though she was feeling better, she should remain compliant with her medications. In the past, Adriana often took half doses or skipped her medication altogether, depending on drugs, made her feel like she's weak, she told the PHP therapy group. By the next visit, August 16, 1999, Starbranch reported in disbelief that Adriana is talking of wanting off medications. She wants to get pregnant and have more kids. Wants to homeschool the children. On August 18, Starbranch wrote, Apparently patient and husband plan to have as many babies as nature will allow. This will surely guarantee future psychotic depression. And here's the link below. She was charged with five counts of capital murder for the deaths of seven-year-old Noah, five-year-old John, three-year-old Paul, two-year-old Luke, and six-month-old Mary. In the high-profile case, the prosecution pushed for the death penalty, but the defense contended that her depression and psychosis caused her to kill the children. 